Before we get into today's video, I do wanna let you guys know that this video is for educational and entertainment purposes only. Please remember to be kind to everybody everywhere in your everyday life, in your home, in the grocery store, and especially in the comment section down below. Please do not show hate to anybody anywhere. Good morning, my lovelies, my beauties, my friends. My name is Christina and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for clicking on this video. I really hope that you will subscribe, stick around, take a chance and hearing some things that I have to say. And if you are a returning subscriber, y'all already know, y'all are my babies. So good morning, good morning, good morning. How is everybody doing today? I hope you all are having an amazing day. I hope you all have had a wonderful week. I hope everybody's doing good, getting started with your New Year's resolutions. How are y'all's New Year's resolutions going? I know a lot of people don't do New Year's resolutions. They feel like it's funny, it's silly. If you guys have been with me for any amount of time, you know that I do. I think any reason to start new goals or to push yourself in um, new and different and exciting ways is good. Before we go any further, I did want to stop and thank today's sponsor, HelloFresh. HelloFresh, thank you so much for sponsoring today's video. If you've never heard of HelloFresh, you are in for a treat. Literally, HelloFresh is a meal kit delivery service that delivers fresh ingredients for delicious mouth-watering meals right to your front door. Are you tired of setting unrealistic New Year's resolutions every single year that you just feel like you cannot keep up with? I mean, we are busy. HelloFresh offers so many recipes to choose from each week to help you break out of your recipe rut. HelloFresh also offers a wide variety of quick and easy recipes, including 20 minute meals, easy cleanup and low prep options. And you can increase your HelloFresh box serving so you can easily use leftovers for lunches. If you want to try HelloFresh, all you got to do is go to HelloFresh.com and use code ChristinaRandall16 for up to 16 free meals and three surprise gifts. Yes, I said you will get up to 16 free meals and three surprise gifts. Go to HelloFresh.com and use code ChristinaRandall16 today. Thanks again, HelloFresh. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about the requested story of Diane Downs. Have y'all heard about this? Now, Diane Downs has done a bunch of interviews. She was actually on the Oprah Winfrey show years ago, back when Oprah had her iconic big hair. Like, I love that hair. Like, ah. Uh, I want my hair to have volume like that, honey. Like what kind of hairspray was she using? Beautiful. Anyways, she's been on the Oprah show. She's been on uh, the Dr. Oz show. She's been on, all, she's done all kinds of interviews. She has done media, press, a bunch of different stuff. And she is actually in prison right now. She's about 66 years old as of me filming this. And she is in prison for life plus 55 years. Oh yeah. She got prison life plus 50 for what we're going to be talking about today. And then she got an extra five years because she escaped from prison. All right. So if you've not heard the story of Diane Downs, let's just start at the beginning. Diane Downs, who would later in life have a psych evaluation where she was deemed extremely intelligent slash psychotic, was born in August of 1955 in Phoenix, Arizona. She was born to her parents, Wesley and Willa Dean. Willa Dean, Diane's mother, was only 17 years old when she gave birth to Diane, and Diane was her first child. Now, her father was 25 at this time, which was many, many, many years ago, you know, and so I guess it was more acceptable for a 25-year-old to be with a 17-year-old, but nonetheless, quite a bit of an age gap, and Willa Dean grew up super strong, Southern Baptist and she had really strong beliefs as into like serving her husband and her husband was the most important person and then the kids and so Diane grew up in that atmosphere. Now Diane would go on to have two little brothers and one little sister so there was four of them total with Diane being the oldest 
It is said that while Diane was growing up until she got to about the age of 14, she followed her conservative background. She listened to everything she was told to do. She was good in school. She had no problems. But at 14, she did start to rebel. Now, Diane would later say that she felt very neglected by her mother, Willa Dean. She said that her mother was all about her dad and never showed her any love or attention at all. She felt like she didn't even really even know her mother. Her mother was just a servant to her father, or at least that's the way she processed it as a child. Now, Diane's father was actually the strict one. He was the rule setter. He ruled the house with an iron fist. And it is even said that when Diane came home from school, if she didn't have homework, her father would make her read the dictionary which I have heard of other parents actually doing that. So it was funny to read that. But nevertheless, she had to read the dictionary. Now, Diane would later say that when she was 12 years old, her father started trying to have an inappropriate relationship with her. She said that her father would take her in the car, drive her to a secluded area, and have her take her shirt off and different things like that. She said it all stopped when one day they were driving down the road and he told her to take her shirt off and she freaked out and started screaming and went to go jump out of the car and they got pulled over. She said when they got pulled over, the cop saw her putting on her shirt and the cop did let her and her dad go, but that her father got freaked out from that incident and never took her away and tried to do that again. But moving on at 14 years old again is when she started to rebel in about the ninth grade. This is when she started sneaking away from home, drinking on the side, smoking cigarettes, doing little substances. And she started dating or messing around with the guy that lived across the street named Stephen. Now, Stephen Downs, who lived across the street, was not Diane's parents' favorite. Matter of fact, they didn't like him at all. They did not want her around him. They thought he was scum and not good enough, and he didn't go to church like them, and they just did not want her around him. But that made Diane even more want to make it work with Stephen. So Stephen then became her high school sweetheart. They continued to date all through high school. And then when they graduated, Stephen went into the military and Diane went off to Bible college in California. Okay, you guys following this? So she was in Phoenix, Arizona, where she grew up, lived at. Then she went to Bible college in California. Now this is when it starts just taking a whole entire turn, y'all. She was in Bible college, living in California. She was there for one year year before she got expelled and kicked out and sent back home to her parents. Why did she get kicked out? She got caught doing the thing with a boy from there on the altar of the church. The altar of the church. Y'all couldn't find nowhere else. There wasn't no bathroom empty, no outhouse. Come on at the altar of the church. Now, Diane was super upset about this because she said that being at this Bible college was the only time she felt popular and accepted and the center of attention. Pretty soon, we will start to see that Diane became obsessed in her own way of being the center of attention, wanting all of the eyes on her, wanting to be the most important person to anybody she would meet. Now, Stephen Downs eventually got removed from the military. I couldn't find whether it was honorably or dishonorably, but nevertheless, he left the military and when he did, he reconnected with Diane. Now, Diane, not forgetting that her parents could not stand him, hopped right on back into a relationship with him and then they got together. Stephen came to Diane's house, picked her up to take her for a date and never brought her home. They ran away together. However, Diane's dad found them went to the house with a shotgun and said, you either marry my daughter or you bring her back home, but y'all are not doing this. So voila, Stephen Downs married Diane, and this is where she became Diane Downs. Now, Stephen did not want to have kids yet. He wanted to be married for a while. He wanted to live his life and have kids later in life. But Diane was obsessed with the idea of being a mother and having a child. So around this time, she quit taking her birth control pills behind her husband's back and she got pregnant. He thought she was on birth control. 
She got pregnant with her first child named Christy, a little girl in 1974. Now, although Stephen wasn't excited about having any kids at this point, he knew, okay, well, we're gonna have a baby. So he settled in to trying to be a father. But also at this time, Stephen was offered a job being a Gillette model. You guys know the razor and he started seeing stars in his eyes. He thought, oh my gosh, if I do this commercial for Gillette, then I'm going to be able to do all other kind of modeling gigs, maybe even getting to acting. I'm going to make good money and I'm going to be able to take care of my family. And he started feeling super excited about it. However, right before the shooting of the Gillette commercial, he was working on a vehicle that caught on fire and he got burned really bad. And Gillette allegedly did not want to wait for his burns to heal. So he lost that gig and he never got another chance again to get into the modeling career. Around this time, Diane decided she was going to join the Air Force. It is said that she was in the Air Force all but about a blip of a second, like a few weeks before the Air Force kicked her out. It's not quite clear why they kicked her out yet, but as we get further into the video, we're going to be able to make some opinions and guess what they found about Diane that made them say, mm, probably not a good idea to put like massive weapons in this woman's hands. Moving on, in 1975, Diane became pregnant with her and Stephen's second child, and it was another little girl that they named Cheryl. This is when Stephen decided he did not want any more kids. He's like, I'm done. <laughs> like, we got two kids, and I got you, and this is, this is too much for me. We're gonna need to calm down. You won't take your birth control pills, so I'm gonna go get a vasectomy. So he went to go get a vasectomy. Long story short, allegedly the vasectomy did not work, and Diane, not long after that, got pregnant again. And so they were pregnant with their third child and he was super upset. And it is said that Diane went and had um, a termination of the pregnancy. Around this time is when Stephen would say that Diane became extremely promiscuous and started sleeping around. So she got a job working at the post office and she was having all kinds of affairs with different men there, allegedly, and mostly married men and just really looking for this attention, trying to fill this void in her that maybe her mom didn't give her or, or who knows what it was, but she was starving for attention at all times. And she did not feel like she was receiving it from her children or her husband or I guess anybody else. And so therefore she was looking in other places. Now, Diane moved around a bit, but in 1979, Diane allegedly got into a relationship with a 19 year old young male coworker and she got pregnant with a little boy named Danny. Diane, Danny. Now, Stephen decided to accept this little boy as his own and decided that he would stay with her and raise the little boy as well. I can only imagine what Diane told him. Probably like, you went and got a vasectomy and you know I wanted to have more kids and I just wanted to da, 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 da. It is said that Diane only talked to this 19 year old boy after this when she needed a babysitter for the kids. And so at this point, while she's working, doing different jobs, working at the post office, she would either have Steven watch the three kids or she would try to get her parents to watch the three kids or she would try to get this 19 year old watch the three kids. And if none of those could watch the three kids while she worked or did whatever she needed to do, she would have her oldest daughter, which was about six years old or so at this time, watch the two younger ones and she would leave them home alone. Now at this point is when neighbors started to say that they realized that the children were being neglected. They always looked dirty. She realized that the mother, it's like the mother wasn't outside. You didn't see her being loving with the kids. She was just going through the motions and doing what she had to do to get to the next place in life that made Diane happy. Around 1980 is when Diane decided, you know what, I love being pregnant. I love the feeling of being pregnant, it gives me purpose. I think I'm gonna go and be a surrogate mother. So she decided she was gonna be a surrogate mother. So she went to this program in her town and they checked her body out. Everything seemed great. Everything was working just fine. She actually lied to them about the termination previously and said that she had actually had a miscarriage. But to keep going here, when they did a psych eval on her, this is when she was labeled very intelligent, however, psychotic. So they kicked her out of the surrogate program 
And it is said that Diane would go and tell her friends and she would laugh about it. Like, can you believe it? <laughs> I'm psychotic. Like, who, who knew? Like, isn't that funny? Like, I'm super smart, but guess what? I'm a little crazy. Like, she was making jokes about it and stuff. But in 1981, she was able to get accepted into a surrogate program and she became pregnant and she delivered a full-term baby for a couple and she got paid $10,000, which $10,000 is a lot of money right now. But back in 1981, it's like, probably I would say 50,000. Like it's a lot, a lot more money back then. I mean, I remember my grandmother bought her house for $32,000 back in the nineties. So $10,000 a day, that was a lot of money she made from being pregnant. And she decided this is what she wanted to do from now on. She wanted to be a surrogate and be pregnant and have babies. Now, after she had this baby later in 1981 is when she would meet the who she claimed to be one of her loves of her life. And he went by the name of Nick. The problem though is Nick was married with his own family and commitments. But Diane started having a relationship with him, a very intimate relationship. And it went on for a bit until Nick started to feel like she was smothering him. He would later say that Diane became so obsessive, so clingy, she was stalking him. She even offered to his wife for him so she could come like, nope. Oh, your wife? <laughs> no problem. I'll just kill her. And he was like, yeah, no, don't, please don't do that. And she started becoming controlling and she wanted him to be the father of her three kids. And it freaked him out. He was like, listen, I don't want to be the daddy to your kids. I don't want any of this. I need to pull back. The more he pulled back from Diane, the more she obsessed and tried to cling on. And he even said that she scared him a bit. Diane decided that she had to get Nick back. This is the one that she loved. She wanted to be with him. Nobody made her feel like he did. I have no idea what he did different than all the other ones. But for whatever reason, she felt like Nick was the one and Nick felt like he was not the one. So at this point, Diane convinces herself that it's the kid's fault that she can't be with Nick. She's like, oh, now I get it. He doesn't want to be a dad to my kids, so I just need to get rid of my children. Now this is where the controversy comes in because I'm going to tell you this bit of a story, but the way that I'm going to tell it is the way that the courts deemed that it pretty much happened. Diane is still denying this to this day and saying that this didn't happen. So we're going to tell this part. And later at the end, when I give you guys my opinion, I'm going to tell you a few other things. So make sure you stay all the way to the end. Diane came up with a plan to get rid of the thing that was standing in the way of her and Nick's relationship. So on May 19th of 1983, Diane decided she was going to take her children sightseeing at nighttime in a very quiet, kind of secluded area. She loaded her three children up who were eight, seven, and three at the time, put them in the back of the car and began to drive off. She drove with her three children on a quiet road in Springfield, Oregon. This is when she would take out a nine millimeter weapon and shoot all three of her children in the car multiple times and then shoot herself in the arm. After she was done doing this, she did whatever she did with the gun and she drove to the hospital. I saw an interview where Diane was talking about what the kids were doing at this time where, you know, one of them, the little boy who was three years old was like barely breathing and whimpering. And one of her little girl, her oldest little girl, Christy, who was eight years old, was reaching out for her mother like, oh. And Diane took a shirt or a towel or something and wrapped her arm up where she was shot in the forearm. When she got to the hospital and the paramedics and everybody started rushing to get the babies in, her seven-year-old little girl passed away. Cheryl, she did not make it. However, the eight-year-old little girl, Christy, she actually had a stroke. And because of the stroke, she couldn't talk right. She had speech issues. Now her son, her three-year-old little son, became paralyzed from the waist down. I mean, these babies were, I mean, you, you get it, right? Like, absolutely 
Terrible. Nurses from the hospital would later say that when they questioned Diane, she was very cool, calm, and collected. She said a bushy man was on the side of the road and he needed me to stop. So I, I stopped and he held up the weapon and he said he was going to steal my car from me. And I'm like, you're not going to steal my car. Like, what are you crazy? Is this some joke? And she said, and that's when he shot all three kids and her and she drove away and she speeded to the hospital as fast as she could. This was her story. Immediately, cops and investigators did not believe her. They thought she did this for sure. There was other things that made them believe it, like when she came into the room with her oldest daughter, Christy, she, her heart rate would go up so high that they knew that she was visibly upset. And they knew like all of these things did not make sense. And different times while Diane was at the hospital, she would like make jokes about things and just be no, so nonchalant with the fact that one of her children's dead and the other two are severely, severely injured. Also, they wondered like, if somebody else did this, why would you wrap up your arm? Like most mothers would take care of their children first. And also when they checked the phone records from the hospital, they realized that the first person that Diane called from the hospital was Nick. Not the father, not Stephen, not the family, but she called her ex-lover Nick. Now this is where things get tricky. Spoiler alert, she did go to trial and she lost, okay? And that is how she got the 150 years and then she got the five years for the escape later on. We'll get there. However, there are people that still very much believe she did not do this. And there's a couple of reasons why. One, there was no gun residue on her hands or in the car at all. But there were some really weird things like there was no like blood splatter in the front seat of the car if she would have shot her or she would have been shot in the car. It's almost like she was standing outside the car, shot the three kids and then herself out there because there was blood spat splatter on the outside of the car. Also though, to go against her story, her diary. They confiscated her diary and the way that she talked in there leaned towards the kids being a problem between her and Nick. She wanted to be with Nick. He didn't want to be a daddy. And that was an issue for her. Another thing is a witness that saw her driving on the road said that she was not driving fast. She was driving slow. That's how Diane's car caught their attention because they said Diane was driving less than 10 miles an hour, like as a turtle slow. Now, when you hear Diane talk about it, she goes, if I wanted to kill my child, why wouldn't I just kill them? Why would I bring them to the hospital? Well, because she thought she was going to outsmart them, is what I think. And as I say, she may be the only one to get me out of this. Would I have brought her to the hospital? Wouldn't she be the one that I would make sure is dead? There are too many holes in it. If I had shot my own children, would I not have done a good job of it? Why would I have taken my kids to the hospital? Wouldn't I have made sure they were dead and then cried crocodile tears? That's insane to think that I would do such a thing and then bring the, the witnesses in against myself. That's crazy. She thought I'll drive very, very slow, you know, give them time to cross over. But however, two of them never did. Now, when her daughter was able to come to and she learned to talk again and went through, you know, speech therapy and all that from a eight year old baby having a stroke, like that is terrible. But however, she said that my mom shot me. She said my mom did it. Now, Diane denies that. She says, oh, that's because y'all kept asking her and you asked her all these different ways. But she says that she did. Now, this happened in May of 1983. Diane would not be arrested for this until February the next year in 1984. So while she was out and about before they were able to arrest her for the murder and attempted murder, she got pregnant again by another guy. Now she has never released the name of this father of this child, but she ended up having a little girl and she named her Amy. She went to trial in June of 1984 and just one month later is when she had the baby. So she lost the trial, all that, she had the baby. And then like CPS came in and took this baby Amy from her and put this baby into foster care and she was adopted out and now her name is Rebecca. And when I first Heard about all this. I'm like, hold up. Why are y'all releasing her name? But Rebecca has since come out. She's done interviews. I'll leave some linked down below. She talks about how she found out Diane Downs was her mother. She realized that her mother was a monster. She's always wanted to know who her bio father was, but she can't find him. She actually even talked about like how she... 
She started to rebel after she found this out, like it was too much for her. And the way that she found out was she tricked a babysitter into telling her who her biological mother was. And then she went to the library, looked up her name and found out that her mother was Diane Downs and how she like became alive, became a baby, a birth, a, a human. And it just really messed with her. She had a baby at 17 that she ended up giving up for adoption as well. And she said she was at a low point in her life and she decided to write her mother, Diane, in prison. She said that Diane at first was like, I always knew you would find me. I always knew you would write me. But she said then Diane started to scare her because she started saying things like, your father is this like really high profile politician or governor. Or, and she was like saying all this stuff and she was signing the letters like from your mother and father and like saying things like, this is all just a plot, a ploy, really conspiracy or conspiratorial type of stuff that just came out of nowhere. And it scared her. She said she always believed that her mother did in fact kill her siblings and did this. But Rebecca, the daughter who was adopted, got into contact with Diane's brother. Now Diane Down's brother still to this day is fighting for her innocence and says she did not do this. His sister would never do it. So it's so back and forth. There are so many people that think she did not really do this, that this was a bushy haired man. And there was even a man named James that said that he was the bushy haired man. And he did kind of look like the sketch. This is his picture here. And this is the sketch because when Diane was being interrogated, she had to describe what the man looked like that she said did all this. He admitted to it. He said that he did it. Like it is. So there's so many ups and downs. It's like, did she really do it? Did she not really do it? But again, for my opinion, I think she did it. I definitely think she did it. And a couple of reasons why I believe she did it is because I've watched the interviews with her. Well, I don't feel very lucky. I couldn't tie my damn shoes for about two months. I think my kids were lucky. If I had been shot the way they were, we all would have died. But at night when I close my eyes, I can see Christy reaching her hand out to me while I'm driving and the blood just keep coming out of her mouth. And that, maybe it'll fade too with time, but I, I don't think so. That okay. haunts me the most. She is, in my opinion, so cocky, so arrogant, so, and just because you're cocky and arrogant doesn't mean you murder your children, but like if your children were, like, how do you breathe? How do you go on? I mean, like, and I mean, shout out to anybody that has made it through that. Like you guys are absolutely strong in every way that you should not have to ever be strong, right? Like, don't you hate it when somebody says you're so strong when you've gone through something that you never want to go through? You don't want to be strong in that way, right? But like the way that she acts and speaks is somebody of no remorse. It's all about her. It's all about Diane still to this day. She wants the world to know that men used to think she was beautiful and enchanting. And she wants everybody to know that she's so intelligent. She doesn't seem to really care about the fact that her children are gone or what they would look like this long, you know, this many years after. So I think she did it. There was even a movie made about it. I will leave uh, the name of it linked down below as well. But yeah, this is a story of the woman who wanted to be with her man so bad that she got the biggest obstacle out of the way, which was her children. And so now she's in prison for life, 66 years old and still holding firm to the fact that she said she didn't do it. Have y'all heard about this? What do you think? Do you think Diane Downs did it herself? Or do you think it was a bushy haired man? Do you think it was somebody else? What would the motive be? She had all the motive. Nobody else had a motive. What woman with three children driving out at nighttime would stop and pull over the side of the road to help a man? I mean, when you got your baby, I don't know. What do y'all think? Let me know. I'm so curious to hear y'all's opinions. Let me know in the comment section down below. But as always, my loves, thank you guys so, so much for watching this video. Please do not forget to like it. It's a free way that you can help your girl out. And until next time, I love you guys so, so, so very much. And I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye. Love you guys. Bye. We are, we are.
dream.